Welcome to the Rock Church and World Outreach Center. We pray that this message will strengthen and encourage you. Now, here's a message from Pastor Dan Roth. Tonight, get your Bible out and go with me to the book of Matthew, the sixth chapter. Matthew, the sixth chapter. We're going to get there in a moment, but I want to talk to you about a subject called Seeking the Lord by Fasting. I told you it was going to rub you the wrong way. Seeking the Lord by by fasting. Why would I want to talk about something like this? Well, this morning you heard it, and uh, last Wednesday night you may have heard it in church that uh, the leadership is calling a fast here at the Rock Church and World Outreach Center. In fact, every year for several years now, we've had a January fast where we take some time out to seek the Lord for the year that's ahead of us. And, and it's a good thing for us to do because it, it realigns our focus. It gets us on track, and it gets us in a perspective for the year that we can draw from the entire year, that, that the things that God speaks and the things that God does in this period of time where we seek Him, that it sets us up for success in our year. Now, first of all, let me define what fasting is, okay? And this is, tonight's message is going to be, to some of you guys, you've heard this, you know this, you could probably preach this better than I could, all right? Uh, but, but the Bible tells us that it's good for us to be reminded of the truth that we already have and that we're firmly established in because, you know, we, we need to be walking in those truths that we know. So fasting basically is this. It's a denial of food and slash or drink, okay, the appetites of the flesh in order to seek the Lord. That's, that's simply a quick little definition of fasting, all right? Just denial of food and or drink, the appetites of the flesh in order to seek the Lord. Now, in the Bible, you'll find it's always food, it's always drink, okay? But modern day, we could take that same principle and apply it in other areas of our life. You know, if you find that you're fleshly appetite is constantly for entertainment, it might be a good thing to fast entertainment. If you find that you are addicted to social media, it might be time to fast that. Or maybe it's sports has a, a rule over your life and you want to take some time out and, and you want to fast that thing and, and, and deny yourself that thing for a period of time, that might not be a bad idea. Pastor Deborah said this when talking about prayer and fasting. She says, prayer and fasting silences what is loudest in our lives in order to hear clearly the voice of the Lord. So there's a purpose behind why we fast. It silences the appetites in our lives. You know, oftentimes we don't even know that our appetites have a voice until we start fasting. Is that true? Anybody ever fasted before and you didn't even realize how hungry you were or how in bondage you were to a certain thing until you started fasting that thing and then all of a sudden it was like it's everywhere you know uh, we were joking about it it's almost like like uh, you know people that, that stop drugs they always have the testimony man nobody want to give me free drugs when I was doing drugs it was always for sale but then once I stopped doing drugs everybody had it for free it's the same thing with fasting you know nobody ever wants to buy you donuts and bring them over to the house when you're eating but then the moment you start fasting someone's on the phone hey I picked up an extra dozen donuts can I bring it by and you're like no Stay away, get behind me, right? And, and, and it's just one of those things that your appetites all of a sudden start speaking very loudly to you. Uh, the moment you decide, hey, I'm going to fast my cell phone or something like that. Everybody's, I'm trying to call you. I'm trying to get a hold of you. Where are you at, bro? And, and you're going, my goodness, this is crazy. So how do we fast? Well, what, what's the way that we should fast? Well, you know, just simple, plain and simple. Uh, as far as what we're talking about for the church purposes, it just just figure out what's going to work for you. Maybe you want to take a meal a week, right? And for the next three weeks, four weeks, you just say, you know what, Friday's lunch, I'm going to give to the Lord, and I'm going to seek Him, and I'm going to pray. Maybe you want to say after 7 o'clock at night uh, for, you know, the next week or the next 10 days or 21 days or until the end of the month, I'm just going to take that time, and I'm going to seek the Lord at night. Maybe you want to say, you know, uh, there's, there's specific things that you're going to do. Uh, like maybe you've heard of the Daniel fast, right? Where you find in Daniel, the 10th chapter, that uh, he doesn't eat any meats, he doesn't drink any wine, and he doesn't eat anything pleasurable to the eye. Now, I don't quite understand that because when I'm hungry, it doesn't matter if it's chipmunk food. It looks pleasurable to the eye. I'm kind of eyeing it like ready to wrestle that little guy for his dish. You know what I'm saying? And, 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 it, and so, you know, it, it may just be that, you know, you don't like lima beans and so you go and you buy lima beans or something like that and you're still able to eat you're still able to get the nutrition that you need and, and at the same time you're able to seek the lord just choose what you're going to do choose what you can handle start small you know don't go for the jesus 40-day fast in the wilderness right off the bat you know you're going to die uh, can i just share that with you that is an extreme fast 
That is something that you have to know. The Bible says Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness and fasted for it. He was led by the Spirit to do that. See, you should not be going on no food, no drink forever and ever, amen, if, if the Spirit isn't leading you, okay? And you just have that random thought pop in your head, well, I want to be like Jesus. That's great. You can do that so many other ways, all right? Let, let's start small. Start somewhere. Uh, skip a meal, you know? Start with uh, maybe you want to do juices. Maybe you want to do the Daniel fast where you can still eat things and still drink water and still get the nutrition that your body needs while denying the fleshly appetite so that you can seek the Lord. Okay? Everybody good with that? So fasting is a temporary denial of the flesh, something physically necessary in order to silence our appetites in order to seek the Lord. So the question comes, well, then why? Are we commanded to fast? Are we, you know, is, is there some, thus saith the Lord in the Bible that we have to do this? Not really. Okay? But it is assumed by the Lord that we will fast. It is assumed by the Lord that we will fast. So if Jesus assumes something about my life, I'm not going to make Jesus a liar. Is that true? So I'm going to seek the Lord. I'm going to fast. Why? Because Jesus assumed that I would. Matthew chapter 6. You turned there already in your Bible? You got it? Matthew chapter 6, verse number 16 through verse number 18. He's just got done talking about prayer talking about forgiveness. And then verse number 16, he says this. He says, moreover, when you fast. Everybody say, when you fast. Do you know he just assumed you were going to fast? That was the Lord saying, I know you're going to do it. I don't have to command you to do it. It's just something that you're going to end up doing. Why? Because you see the example of the Lord, you see the example of the apostles, you see the example all throughout the Bible, you see the benefits of it, which we'll talk about in a moment. But it's something that the Lord assumes we're going to do. When you fast, do not be like the hypocrites with a sad countenance, for they disfigure their faces that they may appear to men to be fasting. Surely I say to you, they have their reward. That kind of gives me a funny image, you know, of people that are just like they mess up their hair and they, you know, kind of rip their clothes and unbutton and, and they're kind of walking around, you know, half dragging the foot behind them. Oh my goodness, I'm so hungry. I'm fasting, you know. And, and, and the moment you come up and you say, you know, like you're, you're at the, the job or you're at the office or something like that and you come on, hey bro, you want to go to lunch? Oh, it'd be nice if I could have lunch. I'm fasting, remember? And now all of a sudden you got the guilt trip, that sort of a thing. You know, so he says, don't be like those guys. Don't be a hypocrite. Don't say one thing and do another. He says, you, they have their reward. Their reward is that you noticed and you laughed at them. You know, that's, that's their reward. But he's, look at verse 17. But you, when you fast, two times in two verses, right, he has assumed we're going to do something called fasting. When you fast, anoint your head and wash your face. In other words, take a bath, dirt ball. <laughs> Clean yourself up. Put a smile on your face. Brush your teeth, please. Use mouthwash and make sure no one knows. Look at what he says. Verse 18, so that you do not appear to men to be fasting, but to your Father who is in the secret place, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you openly. See, our fast is not designed to be something that men see. You say, well, pastor, you've announced that you're fasting. You announced what you're going to be doing. I did that because I'm a leader in this church, and I want you to see the example. Otherwise, you all wouldn't know what I was doing, okay? But I'm doing that because the Lord has made us, leaders in this church, to be real leaders. You can't go where you don't see that I'm going, right? And the leadership of this church, we're all participating in some way or another. But I'm not going to be walking around this place like, oh, Oh, you know, it's not, you're just not going to see it. I'm going to have a pep in myself, a smile on my face. I'm going to be loving people out there, shaking hands, doing my thing. Why? Uh, it's not about me being seen by men. This is about us being seen by God. Most of all, God sees the secret place. God sees the desires. God sees whether or not your fast is really pressing in or whether or not it's just an outward expression or what it is. God sees all through the mask that we put on. God sees past the outside and he sees right into the heart. And that's where your fast ought to come from. We'll we'll discuss that a little bit more in a moment. So why fast? Well, we, we see that we fast because it's assumed. But also, verse number 18, notice the last part. Your father who sees in secret will reward you openly. We want to see the reward of our fasting. Is that right? 
Don't, don't you want to see the results? Don't you want to see the reward? Well, when you do something, you don't just do it and expect nothing. No, I want to know that my fast did something. I want to see the benefit. I want to see the blessing from it. I want to see that there is a reward. And thank God he includes a reward with a fast. Why? Because otherwise, we wouldn't do it. Is that right? If you had to deny yourself food and drink for a period of time and you got no results and no reward, you would say, forget that. I'm done with that. You know, I'm going to go eat because at least in eating, I can see the results. You know, I can see something's going on. I feel good and I, I look good and, you know, at, at least I know I'm warmed and filled. You know, that sort of a thing. But God doesn't leave us hanging. God doesn't leave us out there on our own. God says, no, when you... Seek me, and when you put in the effort, you're going to see the results. You're going to see the results. What are the rewards? What are the rewards? Well, I was looking at this. I was looking at fasting throughout the Bible. I looked up the Word and found every instance of fasting in the Bible in my studies today. And throughout the Bible, we see kings, queens, governors, priests, all these people calling people to fast, seeking the Lord, and we see them get rewarded. A couple of examples for us. First one is Jehoshaphat. You guys remember Jehoshaphat? Jehoshaphat was a cool guy. He was a good king. He, he did a lot of good things in Israel. He had a pure heart before the Lord. Well, Jehoshaphat had three armies, three nations coming against him. And they came and they reported to Jehoshaphat that, hey, they are down by the great sea. They're in a place called En Gedi, which is not too far from where we're at in Jerusalem. And they're coming after us. They don't like us. They've mounted armies. And now they're coming against us. And so what did he do? He calls a fast. And he tells the people to seek the Lord. And in that seeking of the Lord, we find out, you can find the story there in, in, the, in the Bible. And it says that he, he fasted and he prayed for protection and for victory over the enemies of Israel. You remember, all of a sudden in the assembly, one of the prophets stands up and he says, Hey, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. God's going to fight your battle for you. You're not going to have to do anything. So you know what Jehoshaphat does? He goes and he calls out the praisers. He puts the praisers out front. Why? Because they're celebrating the victory that God already had for them in the Lord. See, if you're looking for victory, if you're looking for a, a, a success, if you're looking for greatness, for God to come through on your behalf, it's time for you to fast and seek the Lord for that. Not that you're seeking victory. No, you're seeking the Lord so that he can bring the victory. Are you listening? Well, what else? Well, we see Esther. You guys remember Esther, right? Here she is. She's chosen out of the people of Israel. Now she's the queen and her people come to her and they say, hey, there's a plot coming against us. They're wanting to start a genocide. They're wanting to kill off all the Jews. And so what does she do? They say, maybe it's that you've been raised up for such a time as this, Esther. And you can go before the king. But she couldn't go before the king unless she was called by the king. And if she went into the presence of the king, he had the authority to put her to death because she had not been called. And so they said, hey, you've got to put your life on the line because all of our life's on the line anyway. And so what does she do? She says, fast and pray for me. Pray for favor and pray that God will bring about a deliverance. And as they fasted and prayed, you know the story. Esther went in before the king. He extended his scepter to her and granted her to come into his presence. And she was able to stop the plot against the Jews. And she had favor and breakthrough in a deadly situation. See, you might be in a situation that you need breakthrough. You've been believing God and it's getting toxic. It's getting deadly. And you don't know how you're going to make it. Maybe in this fast of time to seek the Lord... Once again, for that favor that you need on your life, that you're going to go in and talk to your boss, that you're going to go and talk to your family, that you're going to go and talk to somebody, and you need the favor of God on your life. You need God to open doors no man can close, and to close doors no man can open. See, when you fast, you silence those appetites and those voices that are shouting at you constantly, feed me, feed me, feed me. And now all of a sudden you can hear clearly the plan of the Lord. God will give you the direction that you need. Here's another one, Ezra. Ezra fasted with the people because they needed direction. He didn't want to let the king that he was leaving with the exiles, he didn't want to let him know that they needed any provisions or any protection. And so he and the people fasted and prayed God that God would give them the right route to travel, the right way to go so that they would be protected, them, their families, their children, and their goods, and they made it safely to where they were traveling. See, in our lives, we need the direction. We need deliverance. We need God to watch over our way. 
And as you fast, you will see the direction and the vision of God. God will open the eyes of your understanding in ways that you never dreamt possible. You will see the plan. I remember one year we were fasting and I was believing God and, and I needed direction in my life. And I remember I had nothing the whole month of January. I was fasting, I was praying, I was pressing in, and the whole month I was sitting there going, God, any minute now you could just drop it on me. I mean, just give me something. I God, one little word, you know, a something, Lord, a scripture, an encouragement, uh, hey, I noticed something, God. And it wasn't until the last day of the fast, we were over here and we were having a praise night and we were going to break the fast after we celebrated. And so when, when we were here in the sanctuary, we were jumping up and down, praising the Lord. I remember I was just, you know, doing this number, right? I had the rock fist up. And I'm like, I don't do this. This is not me, Lord. What's going on here? You know? And God said, you've been knocking and now I will open the door for you. God gave me the direction that I needed that night. He just opened it up. See? Maybe you... I've said, God's being so silent. God's being so quiet. I don't know why he's so distant. Maybe it's time to deny the flesh and those other voices that are shouting, turn off the TV, turn off the cell phone, to, to get away and, 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 and turn off the appetites so that you can clearly hear the voice of the Lord. God may have been speaking, but you may not be listening. It happened to me plenty of times. Hello. What about this one? The church at Antioch, church at Antioch, they were fasting and praying for ministry service and for commissioning when they sent Paul and Barnabas out. You know, we've been talking about your place in the body on Sunday mornings, talking about getting involved, loving people more, doing church better, getting involved, volunteerism. This is actually our volunteer appreciation month where we say thank you to all those of you who put your hand to something. We so love you and so appreciate what you do. And maybe you're sitting there going, well, I, I don't know what my position is. I don't know what my place is. Why not fast and pray and let the Holy Spirit separate you for the work that he's called you to? Now, I want to make a statement. I want to close this message, just a short little message on fasting, seeking the Lord through fasting. This is, this is a very important statement. Above all else that you've heard tonight, okay, about types of fasts, how to fast, what to fast for, the rewards of fasting, here's the most important thing for us tonight. It's this, that the heart is the most important part of seeking the Lord by fasting. If your heart's not in it, go eat, okay? If you're not going to get involved here, don't get involved here or here, okay? You got to get your heart into this. This is really, it's, God doesn't care. It, it's just like giving. You know, God's not about the amount. God's about the heart. It's just like anything in your life. The amount of heart that you put in is the amount of response you're going to get back. Because with the same measure that you use, it will be measured back to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over. You, you give it with an empty heart, you're going to get empty back, Okay? In our lives, if we're going to fast, if we're going to do anything with the Lord, let's do it from the heart. most important part of seeking the Lord by fasting is our heart. And, and, and can I say this to you? There is a wrong way to seek the Lord in fasting. The wrong way is with the wrong heart. Selfish motives. I'm going to fast and pray so that the Lord gives me money. No, you're not going to get anything from the Lord, all right? Because you seek and you don't find because you seek for your own pleasures, the book of James says. So, the right heart gets you to the right place with God. But the wrong heart will not be rewarded by the Lord. God is looking for the heart. Isaiah chapter 50, verse number, I'm sorry, Isaiah 58, verse number 4. Look at what is going on in the heart of the people. He says, indeed, you fast for strife and debate. See, that's not a good fast, all right? Already they're starting off on the wrong leg. And he says, and you strike with the fist of wickedness. Wicked means contrary to the ways of God. God doesn't want us coming in our own ways, in our own strength. God doesn't want strife and division. God doesn't want debate and, uh, and a fist of wickedness striking during our fast. It's not what this is about. Well, I'm more holy than you are. I've been fasting. I've been doing food, not just my cell phone. That's like the lowest form of fasting. No, come on, guys. That's not where we're at. We're here cheering one another on, encouraging one another. Some of you guys in this place have never fasted in your life. It's okay. Don't feel like a less than person. Don't feel like a, a lesser citizen of heaven. No. Start somewhere tonight. Start somewhere this month. Seek the Lord and you will find him because you're seeking him with a pure heart. He goes on. He says, you will not fast as you do this day to make your voice heard on high. See, the motive that the Lord saw these people were fasting and seeking him with was so that their voice would be heard. 
See, in our life, we cannot fast so that our voice will be heard by God. Like, I've been praying for this and praying for this and praying for this, and it's not working. God must not be listening, so let me fast to get God on my side. That's not what this is about. This is not so that your voice will be heard on high or my voice will be heard on high. This is so that God's voice will be heard, and I can respond in obedience and live out life the way God would have me to. Quick shout out for Girlfriends AM. They're going to be starting again. They're going to be talking about kicking it up a notch. And if you ladies are available on Thursday mornings, they're going to be diving into Isaiah 58. It's going to be dynamic, going to be tremendous. And I think I just robbed my wife's entire first sermon. No, you got a different sermon? Okay, good. I was so scared that I was taking... She's been, she's been reading these books about fasting, and she's been teaching me everything that she's learning in the books. And now it's just like flowing out of me. And so I was so scared that I was going to rob her sermon, but she said it's all good. She, she's got something else, something on a whole nother level. That girl can preach if you haven't heard her. So ladies, it's going to be great Thursday morning. Not about us being heard by God, but a about God being heard and obeyed by us. It's where it's about. It's what it's all about. Last scripture for tonight, Jeremiah chapter 29, verse number 13. Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 13. You will seek me, and you will find me when you search for me with all your heart. That's the right way to fast, is by seeking the Lord with all your heart, by getting your heart involved in him, by getting everything that you are deep in the secret place. Not being seen by men, not being heard by men, not so that God can hear our voice, but that we can get in that secret place, get quiet, silence the appetites and the things around us that would distract us, and so that we can hear the will, the counsel, the plan, the destiny that God has for our life. Simple little message tonight about seeking the Lord by fasting. You guys get something out of that tonight? <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I want to take just a moment because some of you in this place, you're reading the lyrics on the overhead. And you're reading that Jesus makes all things new. You don't quite understand that because you haven't yet been made new. In the book of Revelation, Jesus says, Behold, I make all things new. It's going to be a new heaven and a new earth. No more sin, no more sickness, no more pain. What a day that's going to be. But you don't quite know whether or not you have been made new yet. And if there's even a shadow of a doubt, if there's any question in your mind, listen up to what I have to say to you tonight. John, the third chapter, Jesus is speaking to a religious leader of his day by the name of Nicodemus. And as they're talking, they start talking about how to get to heaven. And Jesus makes a very interesting statement in John the third chapter he says if you want to enter the kingdom of heaven you must be born again plain and simple if you're going to get to heaven there's only one way that you're going to make it you must be born again now there's a problem in our society because movies television hollywood books the internet have all raked that through the coals they made it out to be some weirdo stuff that no one wants to be a part of and yet, let's not let the world define for us biblical truth. Let's let the Bible do that for us. What does being born again really mean from the Bible? Well, from the beginning of the Bible to the end of the Bible, it's always meant the same thing. It means that you've given God all of your heart and that you've given God all of your life. That's simple. It's all or nothing with Jesus. You don't get born again by church attendance. You don't get born again by church involvement. You don't get born again by good works. You don't get born again by Bible knowledge or knowing who God is or being able to talk the talk in church. You get born again one way. 2 Corinthians, the fifth chapter, verse number 17. Behold, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. All things have become new. How does that happen? That happens when you give God all of your heart and you give God all of your life. Plain and simple. No other way to get to heaven other than being born again, being made brand new on the inside. Why? Because what is born of the flesh is flesh. What is born of the Spirit is Spirit. Jesus goes on to say in John the third chapter, you must be made new, recreated, raised from the dead state that you were in, in sin, in order to inherit eternal life with God forever and ever. That happens when you give God all. 
See, Jesus won't settle for half. He won't settle for 99.9%. Jesus wants all of your heart and all of your life. Let me prove it to you. Last book of the Bible, book of Revelation, Jesus is speaking to the church, just like he's speaking to us here in this church tonight. And he says, when I come, I want to find you hot or I want to find you cold because if I find you lukewarm, I will vomit you from my mouth. Those are pretty gross graphic words from the mouth of Jesus. But really, what's he talking about? What's he saying, lukewarm? What's that all about? Well, it's a little in, little out. A little up, little down, a little token prayer every now and again. And occasional church attendance. God is something in your life, but he's not everything. And you're not opposed to God, but you're not wholehearted for God. Listen, if that's your relationship with Jesus, you're not going to make it. Why? Because only people that are not real Christians will be ejected and rejected from the body of Christ. So tonight... You know that's you. You know that's you. Right now, your heart feels like it's on fire, like there's a a, a pull on it right now. The Holy Spirit is speaking to you and saying, you have not yet given me all of your heart and given me all of your life. And you know that if tonight was your last night on the earth, you wouldn't make it to heaven. You'd end up in hell. Listen, I don't want that for you. You don't want that for you. Most of all, God doesn't want that for you. That's why he sent Jesus, beaten bloody and hung on a cross. Tonight, I'm going to give you an opportunity to be made new from the inside out, to be born again, headed for heaven, and denying your presence in hell. I'm going to have that, them sing that one more time. And if you need to do that, I want you to just come and stand here at the altar tonight. You come right now, get out of your seat, get in the aisle, and meet us up front. Come on, let's sing that Jesus, you make all things new. And you come right now. If you need to give God all your heart, need to give God all of your life, come on, it's a bold move. But I believe you know who you are, and you're ready to do it. You just come right now. Make your way to the front right now. Can we get a little bit of house light so that they don't trip or anything? And you just come right now. Just make your way to the front. They're coming. Come on, let's sing. They're, they're coming. Come on, you know you need to do this. Know you need to give God all your heart. Know you need to give God all your heart. You guys don't have to kneel if you don't want to. It's okay if you do, but you come. Come on. Come on out of your seat. Need to give God all your heart. Need to give God all of your life. Be made brand new. God's speaking to you right where you're at. Come on, don't be shy. There's no shame here tonight. I'm not here to shame anyone into heaven. I'm here to offer you eternal life with God. And you know, you know, don't be stubborn. Don't be stiff necked. Not able to turn. Follow God. They're still coming. Come on. If you need to come, just slip out into the aisle. Meet me up front right now if that's you. Come on, I know there's more. I know there's more. The Spirit of God just spoke to me. There's five of you out there. Need to give God all your heart. Need to give God all of your life. Be made brand new from the family rooms. If you want to come and bring your children, you're welcome to come right now. If you're walking in from the foyer, you know you need to give God all your heart and all of your life. You just walk to the front right now. Come on. Front to the back, left to right. Wherever you're at, just slip out. And you come right now. Come on. Come on. They're coming. They're coming. There's three more of you that need to come. You just come right now. Come on down. two more. Come on. Just come right now. You know the Spirit of God's moving on your heart right now. He's tugging at you. Wooing you with His love. the wall just come down you've resisted him long enough 
just release your heart and life to Jesus right now. You come. You come. There's two more of you. They're coming. They're coming. Come on, anybody else, if you need to come. Just because I said there was two more doesn't mean there's not four more, five more. If you need to come, you just make your way to the front right now. They're still coming. Come on. Come on, we'll wait for you. You can come too. Make your way to the front right now. If there was any hesitation tonight, come on, make sure before you leave this place. They're coming right now. Anybody else, if you need to come, you just come right now. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. All right. Well, can we give the Lord a great big praise? You guys came. Hallelujah. Glad you guys are here. Praise the Lord. All right. You guys responded to the Holy Spirit. That's an awesome thing. Right over here is my friend, Pastor Joel. Really good guy. I'm going to let you know what he's going to do. He's going to lead you right over there. Pray with you a simple prayer to invite Jesus into your heart. You're going to be born again, brand new on the inside. You get a clean slate. That old man that did all that dirty stuff, gone. Jesus is going to make all things new. Okay? Now, we want to help you in your walk and in your new life with Jesus Christ. And so we're going to give you some free information. He has it for you there in the back. He'll get it into your hands. It's absolutely free. He'll talk to you about a program we have to help you get strong in the ways of the Lord so you don't go back to the old man, but that you go on with the new man in Christ. Okay? It's called Spiritual Personal Trainers. Easy. It's free. He'll describe how it works. And then let you come right back into church service. We'll, be, uh, we'll, we'll do some, some business stuff here. That way you guys don't miss too much, okay? And you guys can come right back in and jump in where we're at, okay? So if you guys can make a left turn, follow Pastor Joel. Come on, let's give the Lord a great big praise tonight. Hallelujah. Come on now. Hey, you just heard that altar call. You just wanted to give God all of your heart and all of your life. Now let me lead you simply in a prayer of inviting Jesus Christ into your heart as your Lord and Savior. In fact, why don't you just go ahead and listen to me and go ahead and close your eyes and just repeat these words after me. I'll go slow, you repeat them. Say these words. Say, Father God, I come to you in the name of Jesus. I believe that Jesus Christ is your only begotten Son and that you sent him for me and that he died for me on that cross at Calvary. I believe that his blood washes away my sins, that I am now a new creature in Christ Jesus. And I thank you, Lord. I receive you now and forever as my Lord and as my Savior. I'm going to turn from sin, and I'm going to turn with all of my heart and all of my life to you, Jesus, as my Lord and as my Savior. Let it be known in heaven as well as upon the earth, that I am born again. I'm a child of God, that I'm saved, and I'm headed for heaven and denying my presence in hell. Thank you, Jesus. I'm alive forevermore. Love you so much. God bless you guys. Everybody just say amen and receive Christ as your Lord and Savior. So talk to you later. God bless you. Thank you for listening to the Rock Church and World Outreach Center. If this message spoke to you, please share it with us. We'd love to hear from you. You can find more information at www.rockchurch.com.